Everett, and welcome to Frank's Files. Welcome to Sotheby's Luxury Week. I am thrilled today to welcome my friend Wally Koval. Wally's here to help me highlight some of the great sales that we have coming up at Sotheby's and Luxury Week. We have fantastic auctions of jewelry, watches, wine, handbags, sneakers, and more. So we're excited to tell you about all of it, but what we're really excited to do is talk about this great campaign that you have created. So for those of you who don't know, Wally Koval is the founder and mastermind of Accidentally Wes Anderson. Now, this is one of my favorite Instagram feeds for many years. But Wally, first tell me, when did you found Accidentally Wes Anderson? How did this all happen? Well, Mastermind, I think, is a little a little much, but I'll take it. Thank creative you. Force? A creative Force. That's How's that? I'm going to change my business card to Creative Force slash Mastermind. AWA started summer 2017. Amanda, my wife, and cohort, we were doing some international travel. Found some interesting places, and maybe it was watched one too many Wes Anderson films on a plane and got off a little hazy and you know tired and seeing things in a different light. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like, that looks like it could have been plucked from a Wes Anderson film. But really, it was a real place. And so I just kind of tasked myself, once a day, every day, I'm just gonna post on Instagram and it's gonna kind of be my own thing that I have to figure out where it is, what it is, and when it was built or when it was established. And people started coming around to it and talking within the, the group and reaching out and saying, I've been there, I've seen this place before, yeah. and very slowly started to expand from there. So tell me about Wes Anderson and his support. He wrote the foreword to your book, so this must mean that you have some kind of a relationship. We went out, created the book. He had final say, so after a year and a half additionally of work pulling this together, research, writing, working with 180 photographers from all over the world to pull this together, we sent him the final draft. And at that moment, he said that he would write a few words. I remember he wrote, this is short, but is it sweet? And I was like, it's incredibly <laughs> sweet. So it was, it was unbelievable. I'd love to hear now how you translated that style into the campaign that you've worked on. The name of the campaign is Hidden Wonders. Yes. And tell me why this type of property across all these categories fit in so well to that theme and to what you do. Everything that we do is exploring hidden wonders, so to speak, typically within the field of architecture or travel, right? But when it comes to pieces like this, yes, they're beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're stunning. But the stories behind them, I believe, are what make them truly valuable and really special, unique pieces. The types of materials that were used at certain times throughout the years, that's what makes these pieces so special. As things start unveiling and posting on Sotheby's.com or on your Instagram handle, Accidentally Wes Anderson, what are we going to be seeing in terms of still images, videos? What exactly have you created? We've actually created an entire two days uh, full of content. It'll start on Tuesday the 1st of June and we'll start in the morning. We're going to be posting a full day of content across our story of us going out, exploring the stories behind these, traveling throughout New York City, finding these interesting hidden wonders throughout and how they connect. The idea of hidden wonders, there's a story behind each one, but at the same time, within the movements of a watch yeah. is a hidden wonder, within the fact that a necklace becomes a brooch. Or like this one, right? The zipper. Absolutely. So this is a great example, and we love Van Cleef and Arpels. They're known for this design, the zipper necklace, the first one made in 1951, I believe it was, based on a design yeah. inspired by the Duchess of Windsor in the 1930s. Now, she never owned one herself. It took over 10 years for them to actually bring this design to fruition. But what's amazing is, of course, this converts it's an actual working zipper. Yes. Right? Absolutely. And then it converts into a bracelet. Then, I love that you were so inspired by some previous videos that I did with my friends at David Webb. This yes. is the House of David Webb, one of the great oh, yeah. American and great New York jewelry houses. And this particular bracelet you found interesting oh. and also just all of, all of the world of Webb. Tell me about that. We were able to go to their workshop and their space on Madison Avenue and see their archive. They have 50,000 or so recipe cards, as they call them, which I loved, right? Well, right? Seeing these recipe cards and these drawings and these sketches of each of these pieces. And his fascination with making new look old, I found very interesting because it wasn't just, yes, let's make it look old. It was getting inspiration from 
New York, getting inspiration from the Met. We were super, super lucky to be able to bring this piece, which is a one of a kind. This is the one of a series of 12 Zodiac bracelets. Yes. Some of them were reproduced, the Libra bracelet was not, and this is just such a beautiful detailed piece. 18 karat gold, beautiful blue enamel. There's a cabochon emerald there, lots of diamonds in her hair, sort of in the wrap in her hair and in the scale that she's holding. It's such a three-dimensional sculptural piece, I love it. And then, of course, you got to visit some of the other great American jewelry houses, including Tiffany and, of course, Harry Winston. Yes. Uh, Harry Winston kind of defines red carpet dressing, and he really actually was the first person to lend a piece of jewelry to Ooh, actress Jennifer Jones to wear the Oscars. So the very first lent jewel for the Oscars was from Harry Winston. Not quite as spectacular as this necklace, but this is the cover lot of our sale. And it is not too often that you get a vintage piece of Winston with important colored stones like this. These emeralds are so beautifully matched in color, such high quality, so it's gonna be very exciting. So it's the first thing you see in the catalog, but it's the last lot that we're gonna sell. And then finally, my personal favorite piece in the sale is the Cartier necklace. I know you did go over and visit the Cartier Mansion yes. as well. Yes, and you we loved the story of the mansion itself. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah, I mean, the story behind the Cartier Mansion as a whole, I think it was 1916, it was traded for a string of pearls for the mansion itself. If I can trade a strand of pearls for a mansion, I'm here for it. You'd be happy with that. <laughs> well, what I love about this piece, this diamond necklace, was from that time. This yeah. is circa date about 1915, and very modern looking, in my opinion. For something around 1915 to be so sort of clean and simple with those baguette diamonds holding the sets of rounds together, it's actually a very striking necklace on, not your typical Belle Epoque kind of floral looking jewel. So yeah. I really love that. Design. Absolutely really stunning. Love thank you very much. Thanks again for the book. I thank can't you. wait to really spend some more time with it. And thank you for watching. Please come see us. Our exhibitions for all the luxury sale auctions will open up on Friday, June 4th. Also, lots of exciting stuff to come. Thank you, Wally. Thank a you. Pleasure and more to come.